It all starts with light. The light sent from the sun, which is about 150 million kilometers away from our world, reaches our blue planet in eight minutes. It shimmers in the green leaves of a tree as it penetrates through the atmosphere. Now let's watch together the adventure of this glowing light being transformed into sugar. When this light enters the leaves, a miracle that cannot be explained with pages full of formulas begins inside the thin leaves. In leaves as thin as a paper. Every day. In every green leaf on earth. Scientists are still doing research to understand how this wonderful event, which they call photosynthesis, take place. However, plants have been working flawlessly in this miraculous activity since they were first created. As if the science and technology in plants, the so-called most primitive creatures on Earth, was more advanced than that of us, human beings. Sugar produced by photosynthesis is transferred from leaves to branches, from branches to flowers and fruits. Some become wheat, some corn, some apples, some become grass. Then chickens eat them, they produce eggs. When cows eat them, they produce milk. They become meatballs in a pan and chops on the grill. When bees collect them, they produce honey. This sugar production in cells is carried out in chloroplast organelles, which are one thousandth of a millimeter. A man-made sugar factory is built in an area of thousands of square kilometers, but they are so small that even a 10 micron cell can fit around 40 chloroplasts. In these green factories, carbohydrate molecules, which we call sugar in daily life, are produced as a result of extremely sensitive and complex processes using carbon dioxide and water. From this point of view, it would be more accurate to call the sugar factories built by human beings sugar separation factories. Because in these factories, they only separate the existing sugar stored in the sugar beet by evaporating the water. They are not a manufacturing factory that makes sugar from light, water and carbon dioxide like chloroplasts. A large amount of waste material comes out during production in man-made factories. For example, toxic gases are released from factory chimneys. Toxic wastes are dumped into lakes, seas and streams. Do you think that waste material comes out in these sugar factories on the leaf? As well. Of course, it does. But don't worry, this waste material is fresh oxygen. The source of life. In other words, chloroplasts have been operated with clean energy and zero waste logic for billions of years. Now let's get to know these tiny green factories better. Chloroplast, in the form of a small disc resembling a lentil, is filled with a gel-like liquid, inside which there are many structures in the form of flat vesicles. Chlorophyll pigments, which are responsible for capturing that special light necessary for photosynthesis, are placed in the membranes of these vesicles. But wait, this is not a random placement. Chlorophylls are positioned on thin membranes in such a way that they can benefit from the sun at the maximum rate. So much so that mankind has imitated this perfect structure in solar panels. It is understood from all this order and design that astonish even the most intelligent creature on Earth. That the sun, the Earth, the atmosphere, the plants, and these green factories and cells are operated in order and in perfect harmony. It is not that billions of years ago, plants needed to use solar energy. And somehow, they produced chlorophyll for this. Those who make such a claim accept that plants have intelligence, knowledge, and power to know astronomy, physics, chemistry, and biology. Plants were not, and are not, conscious of photosynthesis billions of years ago. Nor are they now. Plants lack the brain and the mind to know that the sun is an economical and clean source of energy. For this reason, it is not possible for them to plan a system that can convert solar energy into chemical energy. Then, the one who made this delicate design is the one who have authority over the leaf, the earth, the sun and the universe. Praise be to our sustainer, who feeds us with the light of the sun, to the number of leaves.